top of the, let's just say, good day, folks. What a beautiful day. Guess what? Rain on the way. It has been one dry winter so far. I mean, this is just bone dry. We had a pretty decent freeze in some of these low-lying areas. But the good news is rain's on the way. They're forecasting about between one and two inches here. And that's going to be the first decent rain in a long time. Before we go ahead and get this video kicked off, uh, go ahead and give us that thumbs up. Like I always say, it, we greatly appreciate it. It lets the good folks of Almighty YouTube let them know. It lets them know that we're doing a fantastic job and they all actually like the content we're putting out. Um, I haven't done one of these videos in a while and it seems that y'all like them. So we're going to do a somewhat of a hay hauling video. A little Cummins heavy, heavy haul action. Um, we are in full swing as far as uh, full swing of hay selling mode and uh, we've pretty much got it all buttoned up um, we're just loading out a few people we're delivering like crazy um, and so that's what I'm doing today I've got one person coming up to pick pick up a full load of hay and I'm loading up a full load of hay that I already sold to a gentleman a friend of mine actually and uh, so yeah that's what I'm doing today I'm gonna load uh, 23 bales on my uh, almighty uh, Ram 4500 Cummins turbo diesel and that 40 foot uh, gooseneck trailer and uh, then he's coming I think he's gonna grab 17 on a 35 foot so should be good to go tires look good old 4440 John Deere tractor 79 model 7,000 hours on it it's got an overhaul though about 800 hours on an overhaul pretty good running rig we like it a lot looks like we got a little leak a few little leaks here and there nothing crazy not a big deal anyway uh we'll go ahead and get this puppy fired up and start loading some hay what do you say i would like to say this is a cold start video but it is december 31st new year's eve it's new year's eve and it's uh 71 degrees out so uh to the cold start. Might be one of the better stacking jobs I've done. Not bad. Pretty good looking stuff. A little bit of Johnson grass, but not terrible. I love hauling these four foot bales. We used to, we were in the five foot business. Or we were in the five, sorry, I gotta get these things out of here. There we go. Those things work great, but you can't hear yourself think because they're now noise canceling. But anyway, we used to be in the five foot bale business, and uh, which was good. A lot of farmers still appreciate a five foot bale. But what we figured or found out is that even though some farmers like the five foot bales, most of the time people could not handle, most of our clientele could not handle a large five foot bale with the size of equipment they had. Uh, a lot of our areas more so. I hate, the, I hate the word hobby farmer, but essentially that's what they are. And so um, we decided to go with the new baler and the four foot bale. And uh, boy, we're glad we did. A lot more people are interested in the four foot bales for whatever reason. Um, 
we get to charge just about the same for a four foot bale and so uh, we're not really losing anything and some people are like well you're making more bales per field but really this baler bales them so daggum tight that I'm not convinced that there's the same I mean you can't even stick your finger in there I'm not convinced that there's a there's less hay in these than what our old baler was putting in so uh, yields have been about the same, but it's just hard to judge yields based on fields that rely purely on rainwater. So, uh, I like to think that they're about the same, but nonetheless, hauling is a life saver, right? I mean, you get to ride the rail, you can see your mirrors, you can see what's behind you. It's great. It's fantastic. And, uh, soon I think we have plans, um... That truck's gonna go under a little bit of minor surgery. I got a guy who's gonna work on it. I think it needs a head gasket and some things like that. But we're actually gonna throw a triple axle under this trailer. We want the extra capacity. That truck is definitely capable of hauling this load plus more. And so we're gonna go ahead and hopefully be able to put another axle underneath. So we'll have 12 tires on the ground, 12 G-rated tires. And uh, which would give us a gross on this trailer of 36,000. Um, and when we ordered this trailer, it was one of the heavier ones they made, like cross members underneath the floor, like on um, 12 foot, 12 inch centers. So sucker's heavy. The trailer itself empty without adding that third axle is going to be like, or it's like 10,500 pounds. So it's a heavy trailer. You know, it's back there when it's empty. That's for sure. Uh, each bale is about 800 pounds. So like this load right here, this is 23 bales. I'm doing the math real quick. 23 times 18,400 pounds plus 10,000 pounds is 28,400. So we're like 28, 29,000 pounds just with this load. When we put another seven bales on top to make it 30, we'll be in the, well, it's 28,000 plus, is that 5,600? So 34,000 pounds, so not terrible. They're making one ton trucks rated for 35,000 pounds towing these days. So I should be able to do it with a 4,500. Uh, like I said, we're gonna do a little bit of minor surgery. Um, the emissions parts have fallen off this before I even got the truck. Um, it's got a pretty mild tune on it. I don't think it's, I think it's a stock tune with just the delete. I don't even know what's on it. So I'm going to do a different uh, set of tunes on it. Um, we're going to stud it uh, for head gaskets. I want to squeak a little more power out of it. It doesn't, it, it walks down the road with this load right here. Yesterday we hauled the same load a hundred miles and I didn't even have a sweat in the hills, in the hill country. Just a bunch of this, just going up and down. And uh, it didn't, it didn't even bother it one bit. Yeah, with that being said, another 5,600 pounds, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, we picked up uh, some pretty good land. Uh, it's my dad's home place in Allensville, actually. We picked up some more land next to the, his place and uh, quite a bit of land. And so the market there is a little more saturated because it's in the middle of the country and there's a lot of hay on the ground. So we're probably intending to haul most of the hay. We're, we intend to haul most of the hay here to... Uh, New Braunfels, San Marcos, that area and where our place is. And uh, that way we can get a little more bang for our buck. I know there's fuel and things you gotta consider hauling in time. Uh, you know, there's there's those costs associated with hauling the hay this way, but we think for the margin that we can sell the hay here versus over there, it's well worth it. If we can get a decent margin in Hallettsville, which is where we're talking about, uh, then there's no sense in moving it. But that being said, and I, uh, an added seven bales of hay on this rig alone gives us 30 bale capacity per trip. And not to mention, we did end up purchasing a double stack hay trailer. I haven't showed it in a video yet. I plan to do like a initial fire up video so y'all can see the trailer we bought. It's really nice. We like it so far a lot. We've made tons of deliveries already. It's already paying for itself tenfold. Um, so we stewed on that decision for years until we finally decided all right we can we can afford to do this it makes sense to do this and so we finally bit the bullet and bought that hatred so anyway 
that's kind of the gist of where we're going as far as hauling is concerned. I plan on cutting this gooseneck ball out of here and uh, going with the 30,000 pound rated or 40,000 pound rated uh, gooseneck hitch with a three inch ball. So we're actually gonna change the, the coupler out on this trailer as well to a three inch ball. Uh, we're just trying to make it rated to where everything we're comfortable towing everything. Um, I'm just trying to be as safe as possible. Obviously the third axle will have extra brakes. Uh, and I mean, this is probably where we're gonna go. I'm not sure. If we put any more hay on this trailer, we're definitely going triple axle. But anyway, I know I'm probably gonna have a lot of you gung-ho truckers on here saying, oh, you shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. It's time for a semi, so on and so forth. But, you know, at the end of the day, semis cost money. And this is the next best option. We probably will jump into a semi one day. But uh, just not, just not today. Not, not now, not, not in the near future. Um, when, we, when we jump into a semi, we better be moving a lot of daggum hay. Looks like the customer's here. Sorry for the long-winded explanation of where we're going and the future of our hay hauling capabilities. But uh, yeah, customer's here. We're gonna get them loaded up, come on. And they're off. Starting to get a little sprinkle. I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff strapped down before we get a little wet. rock and roll here's a load <laughs> waiting on dad he's on his way up here he's gonna grab the baler and rake and he's gonna haul it back to my place I'm gonna run over there with this truck real quick because I got the air compressor on I'm pretty sure one or two of the tires is probably low I see oh yeah tires are a little low put a little juice in this one this rake hasn't moved in a month or two that one, probably that one. This tire is low. Shoot, they're all low. It's all right. We'll put us put a little squirt of air in them. That one looks good. And that one's low. Ten four. Let's get after it. Come on. This compressor is the best one. Best thing on the truck. Lifesaver. Ingersoll ran Honda motor. It's getting a little neglected though. Sitting in them. Glad I'm finally getting a shop to put this truck under because. That stuff, stuff like that just takes a beating, like the pull cord and stuff. Anyway, let's get it fired up. Raining pretty good now. Tire's about full. Oh yeah. The best thing ever invented, right there. I've always hated airing up tires. Hurt your fingers when you hold them. Maybe I'm just a little pansy. I don't know. But ever since I got one of them, I have never gone back. The only thing now. I wish they made some sort of quick holds like that for dually tires. Maybe there is something out there. Comment below if there is something out there. Oh, okay. it's, it's raining. See what I mean? Can't beat it. Cannot beat it. Got them all aired up. They look good. Oh, 40 PSI. Just kidding. No idea. So yeah, once uh, once we get the rake hooked up, we'll be out of here, and we'll let the old goat do some pulling. She's a ripper. She's a ripper. Alrighty, we are pulling on out of here. Dad's got the rake hooked up. Very loaded 
down. We're moving. Got a little soaking wet. That's for show. Here's the rig. Second. See how this old Dodge yanks this uh, here uh, 23 bale load. That's all the hay we got left. That's sold. That right there is all we got left. And then we start baling hay in about five, six months. So, giddy up. Barely have to apply any brakes. Well, this is why I turned the camera on. I didn't expect this light to turn uh, red, but there's this long hill. It's probably about a mile long, and uh, I like to see if the truck can get up to 60 if this car will let me. She's been kind of poking along, and uh, I like to watch my temperature. It's got a 200 degree thermostat in it and uh, we'll see how much it climbs which is always a, a good test for a pulling truck see what kind of what kind of booty it's got in it you know been 40 miles an hour from a dead stop I like to shift when I'm pulling hard about 2750 I'll have to clutch a little smoother I'm in fifth gear 2100 rpms 50 miles an hour Almost to the top of the hill. 55 miles an hour, 210 degrees. 2400 RPMs. This is, the, and I've got it floored. Again, 23 bales, running about 28,500 pounds, 213. That's fifth gear. I don't think I'm going to hit 60 till we crest. 215. And here we go, top of the hill right now. 217 and bag it off. It's a good truck. It's a good truck. Good pulling truck. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how I said it was going under surgery. Uh, this truck burns a little bit of oil. It's not really that much to worry about. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out where it was going. Um, but recently, I've noticed a little bit of white, maybe blue smoke puffing out of the tailpipe. Every once in a while. It doesn't even do it all the time. Um, so we've kind of eliminated it. It's obviously burning through the motor and or behind the turbo seals. I haven't really figured it out. But also when I'm pulling pretty hard, I smell a uh, like a coolant smell. And it's only when outside of the truck. It's not coming into the cab. So we're assuming head gasket. Uh, I don't think this truck's studded, nor do I know if it is or not. But uh, hopefully that not too damaged it doesn't seem like it the truck doesn't run hot as you just saw we already cooled off back to 200 degrees it is a 200 degree thermostat in there uh, while the guy's in there doing the head uh, gasket when I haven't put a uh, 180 degree thermostat in there because most of the time we're pulling heavy it's hot here in Texas you know it's at least 90 degrees all the time during the summer and most of the time we're creeping up on that triple digit uh, especially in the dog days of summer so, uh, just anything that can help run, make this truck run cool, we're going to go ahead and do it. But yeah, I'm going to stud it, put a new gasket in. Uh, hopefully that takes care of the oil issue as well. 
mean, hopefully it's not the turbo, but if it is, we'll replace that as well. Uh, and then uh, we'll put a little different tuner on it. And I'm only going to put like a 50 or 60 horsepower tune from whatever stock was. If we can squeeze a little more power out of it, uh, I'd be just fine with that. And we're going to stud it with the little heftier stud bolts. Nothing crazy. I'm not a diesel mechanic, but I've done my research and talked to enough folks that feel like I'm taking the appropriate steps to kind of boost the longevity of this truck for this kind of pulling. And really, this truck, that's all this truck does. I'd say 50% of the time it's got a load on it, and the other 50, I mean, this truck's heavy as it is. The truck's 12,500 pounds empty. You know, and, I mean, it's 11,500 pounds, and when you put fuel in it, uh, it's over 12,000. I'm talking about the drag tank we've got. And so, uh, it's it just, it, it's a little, it's got a hard life. I've already upgraded the clutch. It's got a dual disc Valair, dual disc quiet uh, clutch in it. Uh, the transmission's solid. The only gear that really ever gives me a, and if, I wouldn't even call it a fit, but uh, it scratches a little if you don't walk it in just right. It's fifth gear. Uh, but, because I don't think it's anything to worry about when I change the whole last in it. change the oil last and pull the plug there was hardly there was no shavings on the little magnet oil looked decent but i put that synchro max or synchro mesh oil purple in it eight quarts it's an aluminum case so it's a pretty loud transmission uh, especially with that clutch you get a lot of more gear roll over but my understanding is it doesn't hurt anything so we're gonna let it roll uh, but i did buy an aluminum billet uh, pto cover and that cover has a fill hole on it that raises the level of the fluid so you're allowed to put eight quarts of oil in there without moving the shifter tower. I uh, went ahead and did that, and uh, that's worked great. Uh, I mean, it hasn't leaked, so that's good. Um, I didn't notice a significant difference, maybe a little bit. It did clean up that fifth gear scratch a little bit when I did the, uh, when I did the Royal Purple, so that was nice. Yeah, so, you know, I've kind of done all the things I want to. I just need to pay a little more attention to the motor and kind of get it taken care of. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. You know, it's going to be pretty, pretty... I mean, I'm not going Harry Larry. I'm not going to put 600 horse under the hood or anything like that. I want this thing to last. It's already got 206,000 miles on it. And so uh, it's been a good truck, though. I mean, it has never complained with any of these kinds of loads. Couldn't ask for a better truck. I'm, I plan. We've talked about getting a heavier truck, like a medium-duty single axle, twenty thousand pound axle kind of rig. And you can get them cheap, but you know you got to worry about insurance, and it's just a mini, just another driver you got to put in it. And you know you got this truck sitting around, so might as well take care of this one, get a little more power out of it, uh, upgrade the trailer. And, get on down the road alrighty well we made it back to the home place now I love saying that home place pretty slick I must say 23 bells made it we didn't lose one and no flat tires no flat tires no flat tires love it game changer when we move to the 14 plies I'm gonna wait here for dad to get back and then um, we'll get the baler and rake all situated in the new barn we can start parking stuff in there and then um we'll see how everything fits it should work pretty good i hope it does i mean i built the barn for it so i still this video is going to come out before i get to the final uh video for the pole barn and uh here's a little sneak peek of what's going on in this barn and um this has been i've been slaving on this sucker for a while but uh here you go Ready? I know, exciting, right? Dad's been a huge help in this one. Um, we're gonna be hanging Joyce tomorrow and it's supposed to be colder than a witch's hoo-ha. So, uh, not looking forward to that, but. The only downfall to this setup is backing this thing in you can do it pretty well with a 4440 because the 
it turns so daggone sharp. But when you try to do it with a pickup, man, you gotta be on your game. Well, we got it in. Pretty good fit. About where we want it. Almost all of it's out of the elements. Not bad. Well, let's see if this here tractor fits under the shed. He hasn't started in a while. That a beautiful sight right on the line that's okay right wow well there you have it first two pieces of equipment officially in their resting place for the winter we still got to come over here and service them but at least they're out of the sun and the rain right dad yeah. Dad grew up on his place in Howitzville, and they never really had any shops till Dad put one up about five years ago, and that was nice. And now I'm able to, me and my wife are able to put one up, so might as well do it. So now we got everywhere we go, we should be able to put equipment under cover and make it last a lot longer. All right, the shed looks a little more complete now. Got some equipment in it, some equipment. All right, guys. Well, I got my fancy tool belt on. It's time to start working on the old barn dough. Be looking out for that video if you're interested in that kind of thing. But uh, this is all we have today. I know it was a short little video. I just wanted to show a little Cummins heavy haul action. You know, we got 23 bales loaded up. Uh, it's gonna sit at my place for a little while uh, until we're ready to take it. It's going to Bandera, Texas, about a 100 mile run from here. Um, but yeah, good looking stuff. Not too shabby. Bills still look good. Anyway, guys, we always, as always, we appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Gold Shea Farms loves you. Bye.